I think everyone's kind of bit at this point where it's I've 60 cents in my yeah. bank account. <laughs> oh damn, I can't afford these six times. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the share house. I'm Mikey D. I'm joined by my best friend in the world, Joel Harris. Hello. And today we are joined again by our beautifully talented creative friend, Stanislav. Welcome back. <laughs> Woo! Welcome. So, Straight from my house. True. <laughs> Your first house moving out of. Yes. You're a creative, living the life of a creative, living a life in a big boy home. Now yeah. your room is, I think, as large as my kitchen to the back wall of the living room yeah. even bigger to be honest yeah it is um like a warehouse <laughs> it's like a big empty warehouse of like just everything has been cast aside everything is miscellaneous mm. but it's the dream though i will say when i first saw what you did with your spot as a creative yeah. i i had a little inner moment of excitement yeah you've got yeah. a piano and they've got the music studio it's a studio yeah. you've got space for a television and a bed and there's still so much space yeah. in your you room can do, you can do somersaults <laughs> and he's been recording an album recently and i'm just yeah. amazed when i come into your room and you've just got like there's three of you in there there's like yeah. gear everywhere mm. but you've still got room to breathe like you're yeah. not cramped in the room it's crazy i yeah. went from literally having the like qu- not even a quarter of that yeah. for like my whole life like having a quarter of that space in like a crammed kind of like desk and a bed right next to it. And yeah. then a window. <laughs> like it's prison. You're literally discussing <laughs> my room. Right? <laughs> 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 Shit is exactly like your room. And I, and I was content with that my whole life. Yeah, yeah. I was content with that. But then now I'm like, how the hell do you ever... Go- I, like even having 20% less than this, I'll be like, oh, my room's so small. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you feel the space. Hard life. In our last episode, yeah. you spoke about living with your mum for quite a bit of yeah. time. And so you did that for 26... It was like 26 years, pretty much. Okay. So like my whole life. And you've now, you've taken to the world. Yes. Like a duck to water. I'm like a flying bird. Move, <laughs> moved out <laughs> with Joel Harris and now you're a True. flying bird. I literally actually grew up in a, at one point when I lived with her mm. in like a literal one room, like this is back in, in Serbia, yeah. in a one room house. So Ooh. it was like a full on one room house in like a village. <laughs> and so like to go from that, like literally just sharing the same, obviously I'm like, I'm a baby. So it's like, I don't take up a whole lot of room, but like yeah. from that, yeah, my whole life, we were just sort of in apartments and units, never really had like a house house. Sure. So I, I've had like my room, but for a really long time, as I'd even discussed in the last pod, like very, very close like quarters with yeah. her. And then Earlier this year, we just went to Europe and had a guess a month of like, this is my time on my own. Mm. And then riding off that energy, moved out with this dapper young gentleman. Yeah. Just, and it, it's not an uncommon story to like my whole life. I was in pigeonhole bedrooms yeah. as well. And in the home we're in now, that's the first time there is actually space to breathe. And it's been so liberating. And I guess I want to mm. talk to you today about the difference you found living at home until now and then mm. moving out being a renter, but also trying mm. to upkeep all these creative pursuits despite having way more expenses now, rent, <laughs> groceries, yeah. bills. Yeah. Like, yeah. how have you found that side of things? It's a real, in a, in a weird way, I've, like, romanticized the, <laughs> the poverty of it. Like, the, <laughs> the free fall of it all because it's <laughs> like you have to k- comp- do everything I was doing beforehand, but then now I'm just, like, like I have my family support, but it's still just like you are on your own. Mm. And even speaking of the space being so big, yeah. it actually like enunciates how alone I am. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm just like behind me. There's just like, empty, you know, there's just like emptiness. And yeah. then, so I, I don't know, everything just sort of counts on me to kind of get it done. You know what I yeah. mean? And so like going from the place beforehand and, and the last place I was living was like, again, a, was easily the smallest place we've ever lived. <laughs> we just get smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah. And then we're essentially in the city. So I had a beautiful view of the city, but again, like the bedroom was just totally like cramped up, still completely like creative. Like I was still doing as much as I com- as, as I could. Mm. And I was always motivated to, to keep doing everything. But there are restraints with having that, sp- that space. Sure. And I was telling Joel, I get really, when I make music, I really like to like hop on like Ableton really late at night. There's something yeah. about like lighting some candles and like putting on my colored light. Getting freaky with yourself. And then yeah. just like, the process. <laughs> and just, like making some weird, like making some weird sounds. And then. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and then like, and then, and then, but like, 
while living at at home with with, with my mum, mm. she'd she'd just be like, "What is that clicking? Uh, what is that clicking?" And I'm just like, "I'm just metronome, mum. <laughs> yeah. I'm keeping on beat. It's my keyboard, like, yeah. please." And so stuff like that would just I don't know. It's just yeah. it, it just it just kind of bottles you in, and I'm just like trying to be so mindful of of sound. I Not, totally relate. To you know, mm. I was upstairs at mum's house, and there wasn't a a, a wall or a door a divider yeah. between the upstairs area mm. that I made music in. And so by, you know, 5 p.m. when, when Current Affair came on, Tracy Grimshaw was holding it down. We had to be silent up there. You know, that's <laughs> that's mum's time to it's find Tracy's out about time. Yeah, yeah, which kids just rode a scooter into a wall and gone to hospital. Yeah, like, no I more, need to know. <laughs> no more fat beat time. Yeah. But that, I, I relate to that too. And yeah. that's where I found that like moving out and renting, it became apparent that it was definitely an investment into myself. Because mm-hmm. yeah. when you move out and you remove the power dynamic and you're kind of in more of an equal um, mm. opportune zone and moving out with young people are all kind of like yeah. night alley a bit. It's like it completely oh, it's like removes point. those, that constrictive feeling yeah, of like, oh, I need to like listen to the man and keep it down. You yeah, know? absolutely. The man, <laughs> my <laughs> father. Well, cause we're all kind of like that in a way, like, you know, at, at home at this new sort of s- space, like not that we have hectic late ones, but like we all like to go into our rooms and just sort of like work on our own little things. Yeah. And, like, yeah. and it, it creates for a shared, environment whereas like yeah with my mom she she's a very creative person as well so but like once it hits that time it's like i'm going to bed and i'm like watching a youtube video and it can like like on my phone at yeah. night like just in bed and she's like i can hear that like, oh, 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 that was your fault for sleeping at the foot of the bed <laughs> that's my bad yeah but no choosing oh, a space cool. that doesn't like none of us share a wall and going yeah. from sharing a wall with my brother and my sister yeah. and then my next house sharing yeah. a, a wall with my housemate tremendous difference mm-hmm. not sharing a room yeah. like a wall with either of you rather 100 percent. i remember my brother would have a sub like a subwoofer on the wall Sub-woof. that we share um it's the base okay <laughs> yeah it's the technical term for the base the sub <laughs> Has anyway, it's not important. <laughs> it's more that you combine the sub and all that subwoofer. <laughs> it's weird. I had this conversation with Tara the other day. Like, it's a weird word to say, but then if someone doesn't know what a sub is, then what? Like, what? True. What else sub, can I sub say? Sub means other things these days. Yeah, yeah right, right. Joel. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Seriously, get with the times. So subwoofer on the wall. And I just hear every movie you ever watched, and I Jesus. knew every time he'd crank it is because there was a girl over, uh, and we were sharing that wall, and it was like. This is gross. It's almost as bad as hearing the activities themselves. Yeah. Because yeah. now my mind's yeah. wondering, you know? Yeah. Whereas when there wasn't a movie playing, it's like, okay, I know exactly what's happening. Yeah. I can la la la. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the movie's playing, it's like, oh, there'll be breaks in the movie. <laughs> Awful. Anyways, <laughs> my big thing, if I were to be a human watching this episode, I'd love to know yeah. how to make money while moving out. Because that was my biggest thing. Yeah. Especially when I quit doing corporate creative work and I just want to do freelance things. Yeah. I always thought... How am I going to pay my rent? Yeah. And so I think that'd be, I'd love to hear your yeah. thoughts on how you tackle that. Well, I don't have like a definitive, <laughs> conclusive answer to no. it. Definitely. Like it's, it's all just still a work in progress and it's only been like, what, a couple months of mm-hmm. moving out. I had a job, I had the same job for like eight years and then I quit that job and I just kind of leapt into that free fall. Yeah. Not to recommend that to people, but <laughs> that has been in a weird way, even though there has been, there've been stresses with money, it has just been this i don't know this feeling of like i mean i was in hospitality for context Mm. and again it pays the bills but for such a long time i wanted to really like commit to doing things like to to doing what i studied which is screen and media and to like doing videography and editing and doing all of that as paid work whereas i'd never really done it as paid work yeah and i found that like the most effective way thus far at least just for me was to really just leap out of my, the sort of comfort of my previous job Mm. and kind of commit to, okay, I have to do that. It's like kind of a now or never. It's not like I have the bedrock of my, my comfortable job. And then maybe I'll do some videography on the side and like, just compliment that. It's more like I need to do, I need to turn my passion into some kind of monetary, um, consideration for myself. Yeah. I have to do it. It's tough. It is. Tough. I think we've both been through. I, I call it the self-imposed yeah. poverty. Yeah, like you're. Yeah. You know that you're about to eat ramen for the next six oh, yeah. months straight. <laughs> yeah. I did it when I quit my job and started DJing. Yeah, I don't yeah. Have but it's like when kids. you when it's like the do it or die though. That's yeah. There's, there's something about 
I don't know, the stakes just suddenly seem... Again, I'm trying not to romanticize this too yeah. much because it doesn't work for everyone. And I really, no. I'm not trying to ba- like bash having a stable job because it, it can it can be such a game changer. Yeah, hundred. But but when it came just to came to me to like leap into into that kind of life, particularly while living on my own, I found that I had to just like go all in. I had to just mm. put all my chips in and be like, if I don't make this work, that's it. Like I have to make it work. Yeah. It's not a it's not a matter of like, oh, I'll try. And I have do. to make it work for the I, yeah. yeah. For I the remember though to, to to add on to the not romanticizing this at yeah. all. The amount of panic attacks I had in the span of, of the four months first quitting. Yeah. Of I've got a new girlfriend. Oh yeah. I'm moving to a new home. I, I my money is just plummeting, mm-hmm. mm. and there was that fear, and I still have that fear because mm. some months I just won't get as many gigs as normal. Mm. Mm. And but it, it definitely started to go away because there was that fight or flight type yeah. thing. Yeah. And for people out there that want jobs, I mean, I picked up a couple of things that I thought, oh, any creative could realistically do this. Yeah. Like I, trivia hosting. Right. Like anyone in any city will have a trivia around the corner and yeah. someone that runs them. Yeah. And if you get in their books, that might be rent covered for the week. Right. If you do one or two. And mm. that's maybe, for yeah. me, it's three huge. hours of trivia. That's huge, yeah. And if I were to do more, like, you know, you could pay your bills and then mm. still have time for creatives. Mm. Finding little building blocks like that that can fill in the time, but ultimately with the goal of just having time for yourself at the end of the day. Yeah. I think it's something we've done a bunch is having like kind of full-time, part-time, mm-hmm. like quote unquote stable jobs. Yeah. And being in that for like a few months and being like, this is so not me. Not it. I'm mm. not enjoying this at all. Mm. I would rather plummet myself possibly towards the yeah. abyss just mm. to like, have a go at not having to live that life. Oh, I feel that hundred percent, hundred thousand yeah. percent. I and feel I th- that. Yeah. I think on paper, like moving out or sacrificing work and time to do this stuff is like a terrible, like objectively bad financial idea. Yeah. But like in practice, it's just mentally and mm-hmm. like creatively, it's so freeing and nice that it's like, this really is an investment and it feels so worth it. It's like and nourishing. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. to talk on what you actually did for employment. Cause I think people out there are probably wondering, what can I do to actually pay bills here? Yeah. You did an event work, which is something that I didn't really think mm. about. But there's promo staff, whether it's in Coles handing out free meats mm. or you're, you're at yeah. some sort of like festival handing out sunscreen or whatever. There are companies that organize that and that's mm. a paid gig that you could probably do year round. Like yeah. there's little things that you just wouldn't know. Right. I mostly built up on casual jobs and it's funny mm. meeting people at these casual jobs. A lot of them are like, traveling or they're all i've gotten film work from working yeah. at events because there are other film people working casually there yeah. And, well right. yeah you can be let's say you're a musician you could go work on a cruise ship yeah you could perform and earn a couple grand you could go work for six months if you don't have a partner or maybe bring them with you but there's like, all these options that you don't know and then like you know when you jump into the abyss all you can think of is no one will hire me yeah. i've got no money <laughs> yeah that was my yeah oh, it's a hole it's like a real real scary hole that yeah. you can like get into but i mean again i just can't I just, despair is like the worst enemy of all. And again, I've, <laughs> I think everyone's kind of been at this point where it's, it, uh, sure, like at some point where it's like, I have 60 cents in my, my yeah. bank account. <laughs> oh damn, I can't afford these Tic Tacs. <laughs> <laughs> and they're even on sale half price. Oh, and he loves his Tic Tacs. <laughs> I do love my Tic Tacs. But even then I'm like, I'm like, <sighs> it's okay. Like next week's a new week like mm. i can just start i can kind of start over and um again kind of went jumping into the deep end i'm just like i'll swim out like it's yeah. it is okay you have friends you have family you have people who care about you and you and but mo- most importantly you just need to sink that like despair e- even if that's easier said than done it's like yeah. that's like provided that you have like an optimism for your own ability and being a creative you know that something I do has some value, has some worth out there. Someone wants a piece of it in whatever shape or form, or mm. I have some kind of role I, I can do for someone. Yeah. And you or, know, and, yeah. you're, and you're optimistic about that. Mm. Something will come about it. You just, you just assert yourself. But the, but when you despair, you just go into this just defeatist. Yeah. You spiral mentality. financially and mentally. hundred percent. I think if you're going to quit your job, just, I won't add, <laughs> have proof of concept that the thing you want to do to make you the yeah. money you're actually good at. Because sure. <laughs> I've seen people that just, they go, oh, 
I'm going to start a podcast. It's going to make me millions. And they just quit their job. And they don't have a podcast and they've never spoken publicly before. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like yeah. going through more of a crisis than a, yeah. than a good idea. For me, like quitting my job, it was definitely a wake up moment of like, I am doing these things and I could be doing them so much better if I didn't have this job in the way of me. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just this like real feeling deep in my mm. soul of like, I need to, I need to rip away these constraints and yeah. just like expand yeah you know? yeah you're yeah once you're in that comfortable position the person that's limiting you is you it's not the job yeah you're the one that's keeping yourself employed like 100%. that but yeah you, if you've got that position where you're pretty comfortable that also allows you okay i'm gonna quit by two months time yeah. and that allows you two months of paid work to start planning what you're going to do and start reaching out to people. Yeah. That's a good position to be in. Absolutely. And I think a lot of Absolutely. people can probably resonate with that. If you go get a job at Macca's or something for mm-hmm. six months, use that six months to work out what you're going to do yeah. after it yeah. and have a bit of coin behind you. Yeah. And there's no shame in that. People are like, oh, I couldn't go back to working in a supermarket. Like, <laughs> I'd, you know, it wouldn't be a great look. Mm. It's like, dude, you got to do what you got to do. Totally. Mm-hmm. There's no, no, even like moving, people choose to move back with their parents to save and do stuff. Totally. And I don't think there's any shame in that no. either if that works mm-hmm. for you. No, you got to just go with what, whatever's going to like save you in the moment. Yeah. yeah. And whatever's going to nourish that, that thing we're talking about, about like if you, if the nine to five isn't working for you, but you have all the money in the world, but it's not nourishing you, it's mm. not giving you this feeling of freedom, then what the hell's going on? Yeah. yeah. Like, what, what are we what doing do you, what, do you, what, do you, what, do you, what do you really want then if you have all this money saved and you can do anything, but you don't have the time for it or you don't have the, again, that personal freedom, then just like evaluate. And then same goes if you're not working you know, at all and you're like, what's not giving me freedom is not having the money to look after myself, go have yeah. fun with friends, go see a movie, yeah, go have dinner. Values, then then it... So it goes without saying, but it's like, it's all just like that balance. And I think I've understood that a little bit more with moving out. I think yeah. it's definitely started to kind of hit me a bit more. The importance of money or the importance of balance? Just the, the balance of those two, you know, because, yeah. because I'm, I personally am not at that point where I could do like, an, I don't think I've sort of been in a nine to five situation. And at this point now, move, having moved out, I can't really imagine doing it. Yeah. I can't really imagine doing it. I, I kind of just want to stick in a sort of casual part-time sure. place just at the moment, like mm-hmm. until some, maybe something will change. But that's, it's so much of that is to do with like my soul. So much of that is like, is to do with the time that I have in the evening. I couldn't have those late Ableton nights if I had yeah. to wake up at nine o'clock yeah. Yeah. until 6am, you know, every day or whatever the hell. Um, that's, that's hugely important to me, even if it means like a bit less money. But yeah. again, that is just me. Everyone has like such, like everyone has their own mm. sort of cookie. Yeah. And I'd love to talk about what it's like to sacrifice um, money nowadays when cost of living is difficult. And I think about my parents back in the day where they were both working jobs, dad full time, mum part time, and they were able to just hold on to having a house and three kids where I'm doing what I am now and, and working a decent amount, probably not as much as I could but only just being able to support myself. Mm -hmm. So it's a real selfish decision to pursue this for me because it's like, I know I can't garner many more responsibilities before Mm -hmm. being like, oh, I actually can't afford this unless I start working more, you know? Mm -hmm. And that comes with age, I guess, as well. And your priorities, again, shifting. I will address an elephant in the room. Three very privileged young men sitting here that have safety nets. A hundred percent. And I think so. I I just want to put put that as the lens across this whole episode Mm -hmm. of, we are lucky in that uh, if, if things were to go absolutely tits up, we could probably mm. move back with family, right? Mm. And that's a really lucky position to be in. A hundred percent. And I, yeah, I just want to yeah. acknowledge that because I course. think, yeah. Of course. And we, we know that. Mm. Um, but I think there will be people out there going, <laughs> these guys. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. And I, and you know, I never want to sound like that as well. Like as someone who's just like yeah. out of touch to the, to the realities of so many different like dynamics and mm. You know, across well, we can speak to what we know. Across the, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it is admirable that we have leapt out there and taken that risk, and like felt that we needed to launch out despite it being a financially yeah. bad decision. And I think even though it is a bit selfish, I think being in our twenties, that's the best time to be high risk, high reward. Gary it's, it's the Gary V thing. It's a Gary but it's like because there are safety nets. And you, you just, you really do have to try. Because what if, like, you're in your 30s and you end up with a kid or get married? You don't have as much opportunity to be that oh. high risk. I put that every time I make a decision that's in favor of this lifestyle, I think, okay, what would you be doing then? What if you hit 
40 and mm-hmm. you've got mm-hmm. a wife and kids mm-hmm. and you are miserable. Yeah. Yeah. No. What was the point of doing what everyone else has told you to do and get a sturdy job and get mm-hmm. a house when you hate every part mm-hmm. of that? I think the 20s is like the pure high risk, high volatility era. Mm. And I think it kind of should be that. It, these, these are all yeah. like, these are not objective things that I'm saying. But I just, that's, yeah. it's just my view. I'm just like, yeah, you, yeah. 100%. You, you run, you fall over and you just, you figure out where you're at, you know, rather mm-hmm. than. You know, I couldn't imagine going straight to full time, like yeah. in twenties, and being like, "Well, this mm. is, this is it." Yeah, career time. Yes. Well, I mean, it is career time. I guess it just depends on well, what you want to do. Mm-hmm. As think, a creative, yeah, yeah. yeah. depends on what you want to do. Yeah. I yeah, I think, I think it is a really tough gambit to say to everyone in the world as well. I'm going to be a creative and go out oh, there because yeah. you'll get laughed at. Oh yeah, people are going to ask you. Questions that are kind of intrusive as well. Like, sure. oh, you can make money from that. How much money do you yeah. make? Which is not a question you'd ask anybody else yeah. in the corporate world or, or the life. It's right. a dad question. Like, oh, how much money are we squeezing out of this? Totally. Yeah. It's not about that in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's, yeah, it's, and that's a thing to, to keep in mind that paying bills will be difficult to be creative. And I think that's something that we, you have to be really good at as well is, mm. is saving for that. Because if you're going to do this and move out with other people and, do the creative lifestyle. You're also impacting others if you can't pay your rent. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Mm. I, feel, I feel that. With you. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't got there yet. <laughs> Joel's like, you're looking for jobs? I'm like, I'm making music. <laughs> 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 no, absolutely. You need to factor in other people as well in that dynamic, particularly mm. like later on in our lives when, mm. when hell, we might have families of our own, right? Yeah. Like it's like that's – you, you want to have things at least put together – in your department by that point that's yeah. my biggest you know? fear as well so it's not like dad future. when's the next movie <laughs> yeah <laughs> when's the next paycheck coming in for your, you know <laughs> this one's gonna be the hit i'm <laughs> yeah. telling you i guess if we want to get into really practical tips it's like you always want to have like a month of rent or two months of rent yeah. stashed away just as like a total emergency like always yeah. have your rainy day fund yeah 100%. like I know that I love the mentality of, you know, no backup plan. This is it. This is what we're doing. We're going to try till we die. Yeah. But you st- still have that rainy day. Fight. Right. Don't be silly. Arnold, right. uh, Arnold Schwartzy, the old Terminator, speaks about it in his book. And yeah. he speaks about no plan B. And I used to live like that mm. vehemently. Mm-hmm. And then I realized that is just... If for, for, for people that are anxious about their futures, which we all are because mm-hmm. we're living this very flimsy lifestyle, mm-hmm. I think it's so okay to have a... Okay, let's say by 33, 34, we want to have kids. I can do this. I know I could do this to make a pretty good income. Mm. I've got that in my mind. Of, I could become a wedding celebrant. Mm. I already do emceeing of weddings. Right. Like, I can do that, and I'm okay to have that. Right. What's the backbone? Like, what is the... I, th- I think you can, again, middle ground. There's, like, a way of just, like, live like it's all all on one. Yeah. All, all your chips are on red. Yeah. But then you also have, like, a... You just have a little little parachute five yeah. backs on black <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's like a kind of flimsy parachute even if it's like something i think there's well, i wouldn't even go as far as to say there's no shame it's, it's a more honorable thing to do mm. provided that you have people to like look after yeah let alone yourself you got to look after yourself at the end yeah. of the day you know what and I mean? that's our first obligation right is what you're saying like have a couple of days uh, months of rent you have to look after your housemates yeah. as well, and everyone has to look after that to pay that, those bills so you have yeah. a roof over your head. Mm. I'm the exact same. I'm paranoid to, I, to a fault, but I've got so much in savings just for my rent mm. because I know that I'd hate to let down the mm. other yeah. housemates like that. And it's weird when you feel that financial weight and anxiety. It's like you can do so many things, but it never feels totally alleviated. Mm-hmm. Like I know yeah. that we don't have to worry about our like rent or like our lease renewal mm. until like a bunch of months from now. But it's, mm. I still feel it in my head. It's like, mm-hmm. there's nothing I can do yeah. about this right now. Yeah. And it's ages away. Why am I still yeah. feeling it? Yeah. You know? Also on some useful little, little tidbits, if you're going to go out into the creative world and you actually find the way to have the money to pay for bills mm. and you have all this time to create, you got to get good at scheduling. I don't know if you guys yeah. have had that experience, but sometimes I'll look at my week unplanned. And I know I've got DJ gigs Friday, Saturday, Sunday, whatever. And so I've got the money covered to live that way. Mm-hmm. But I don't know what to do with my time. And mm. you can just crumble with no one else's home and you're just creating. Oh, yeah. 
And then then you're just wasting it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah that's I feel that a lot. It's like, what have I taken all these risks for? If I just wake up and watch YouTube, you know? yeah. Like, you what mean like I... yeah? You mean like a like a just a schedule of the day? Like these, are, yeah. 100%. No, that that saved me. I've talked about before about like during like the lockdown era. <laughs> mm. That was the pure thing that saved me during that era yeah. was actually writing down just before bed every single day. Yeah. What am I gonna do tomorrow? And usually it'd be like the same thing. Yeah. And usually it'd just be like really simple things like make breakfast, meditate, go for a run, have a little workout, make a smoothie. Beautiful. By five PM I'm on my like I'm playing some games and I'm just chilling out. What else am I gonna do? Yeah. Watch a watch a movie, right? Like we're yeah. locked down. But like having that list and ticking through that list was just like Absolutely. it was just like it was just the biggest click. And I think that yeah, you can absolutely you can as a creator particularly, you can just spill yeah. big time when you don't have that structure. Yeah, dude, half the time my one to do was like, did I have a shower today? Yes, <laughs> great. I had a good day. I've I been had lacking a shower. on that so hard lately. <laughs> and it, it's huge with creative projects. No one. <laughs> it sounds so rough. No one wants your art out in the world. No one's asking you, hey, finish yeah, that is, song. Yeah. Finish your short film, Joel. No one's saying it right. to you. And so you <laughs> could just coast on not doing yeah. it. But you signed up to put things yeah. out and hopefully something happens with yeah. it. So goddamn put it on your to-do list. Yeah. Joel, yeah. finish a damn film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It is all self-appointed. Like there is no no boss man up top being mm. like, you got to get this yeah. done by Friday, end yeah. of day. Yeah. It's like, it's full full on you. Yeah. yeah. I've been like that with the with this album I'm working, or this EP I'm working on with, mm. with, with Sam and Trudy. I'm like, because because Sam is um, one of the bandmates, so to speak, is cool. leaving for Europe like in like a week. Mm. And so I'm like, yeah. guys, pretend there's a label right now. And like, we are going to be smeared if we don't meet this deadline. Yeah. Like pretend there's a label, pretend that there's an actual like hectic deadline. And it's not a matter of like, yeah, we'll make this if we can. You are leaving for Europe. We won't get this for a year. Imagine that we have a deadline. We have a, we'll get, we'll, go, we'll get sued if we, don't, <laughs> yeah. if we don't make this. You know what I mean? And like, you kind of have to set, you have to be that like boss, you know, yeah. yourself and be like, no, it has to be done by that day. I think that's so important for you projects. You put an Instagram post out and say, in two months, I'm dropping an EP with these guys and brand yeah. it to their faces are all yeah. over. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really yeah. put them in the Social spotlight. media is truth, that's true. Yeah. true. <laughs> Believe it all. <laughs> there, yeah, I, I'm, I really appreciate this conversation. Yeah. Uh, we've said it off here, I'll say it again. But yeah, I really appreciate it. I think this is exactly what I've wanted to hear mm. as I was going through that period of quitting my job. Mm. And I think it is nice to know the risks of that yeah, you could fumble it yep. if you're not organized and driven enough. You yeah. could absolutely, all three of us could be in a position if we weren't working hard enough that mm. we could take a chance on this. The chance could fail so we work hard enough at it. We didn't find a job and ultimately we had to move back or worse. Mm-hmm. And that, yeah. that's, a re- that's a reality if you're going to take a chance like that. Yeah, I appreciate the content you make about like having quit your job and taking this risk. Shout out the dishwasher, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely coming Clean through. As but hell. I, yeah, I really, I think it's things that people need to hear because I know a lot of people do sit on their projects and sit on like taking that leap to make like their beautiful art because of doubt, because they don't want to screw up financially because of all this stuff. But it's so like, like, what are we doing here if we don't like follow those ideas and really express and feel creatively satisfied? You know, it's so, oh, it's just like, mm. it's it's life, man. At least I feel yeah, that way absolutely. anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do or die. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> it kind of has to be a bit, doesn't it? If you're going to take the leap, yeah. Like you owe it to yourself. You don't know it's anyone else. No, you Everyone else doesn't want you to do it. Everyone else <laughs> yeah, is like, no, yeah. stay in the corporate job. Yeah, yeah, serve capitalism, please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do it. But, but yeah, you owe it to yourself if you're going to do it, do it right. And that's going to come with some freak outs and mm-hmm. it's going to come with financial yeah. instability for a while. Yeah. But it's like you get to experience those emotions and process them as a human being and have mm-hmm. like a life experience of doing that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Like imagine being in an incredibly comfortable position just like all your life, just like yeah. feeling like you're in a plush couch. Yeah. It's like, it's like, what is, yeah, lovely. it's like, <laughs> what are you on about? Dude, uh, half the reason I left my job was like, I am too comfortable. I feel uncomfortable at how comfortable it's I am. It's kind of like mm. walking, just like you're walking through planes. It's like you walk on a flat surface, the planes, but after so long, you're like, where are the hills? Like, yeah, yeah, you want to kind of have where this, are the, yeah. Where, yeah. Are the, where are the interesting sites? That's a really good point. And like, I guess a mountain and like or a hill is kind of like that. Like it can be like a real like hell to climb, but it's just like the ups and downs of it. Like the 
it sounds corny, but it's like the elevation, right? You're seeing all these different perspectives. Mm. You have some lows, you have some highs, but to me, it's so much better than just this still stillness of kind of pure comfort, no ups and downs. Like I would rather have bad downs and really high ups than to not have either. Yeah. Right. And hey, mm. you might be a corporate out there that's listening to this and going, these guys are wankers. And that's so fair because fair. your priorities are different to yeah. ours. True. And I respect the shit out of you for doing what you're doing because we need people to do it. And we don't really need people making creative stuff, but, you know, we kind of do because we yeah. want to watch Netflix at the end of the it's night. It's enriching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's full enrichment of people, like, consuming, like, art. It's so important. Yeah. Mm. And... Yeah I, yeah, I just want to make it clear that I'm not speaking for you guys that are very comfortable where you're at doing your, your, your sure. flat line walking because that might leave you time to go play with the kids or yeah. to buy the third yacht. And yeah. <laughs> if you weren't buying the yachts, then who would? If, and that's important. Yeah. To know. If you did appreciate this conversation, though, do let us know. I think it's, it's a very important one to have had. And just, just let us know your thoughts anyway. We'd love to hear them. Yeah, leave your tips below as well for others. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you're a successful freelancer, um, well done. It's mm. very cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's admirable, yeah. Now, Stan, to wrap us up, you yes. have a film coming out. Yes. With, with Joel Harris. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Early next year, um, we've got this short Night Passage coming out. Mm-hmm. Very spooky uh, near noir thriller I it seems say. scary i watched the trailer yeah. and i was like i'm not gonna be watching it you- <laughs> <laughs> it's too dark for my it was team. scary hopefully we can great. screen something side by side yeah that'd be, that'd, really be, cute. that'd be great yeah it's been a really cool project to work on um doing the score for it as well which has been Sick. which has been a lot of fun just to her- yeah. hermit in my room and just kind of do, like edit and do the music yeah. like simultaneously it's really cool because really we were fun. talking about getting like a sound mixer or colors to someone but it's like not a necessity you've kind of had to do it yourself yeah. but that's like brought a lot of magic along the way yeah. with it Just i think so giddy, as well get you with every single department 100 so percent. Well. it's been a really it's been a really fun fun ride i'm really keen for yeah for people to check it out and dan will be airing that live in a cinema next year and you're all invited True. and yeah. i'm putting that on you now so you live actually do script. it He's going to be doing a live screening along. Joel Harris is going to finish one of these films finally. And it's going to be there too. Oh my God. Yeah. So make sure to follow us at the Share House Pod so you can keep up to date with that because we'll be promoting those things when they come around, fellas. Yeah, and you have a new Instagram handle since True. last time since you were on. Right. That was the end of an era. You're not angry, Serb. The anymore? angry Serb has dissolved and joined the, the heavens. The heaven of last ones. handles. No, it's, um, still, it's still there. It's just, um, it's just Stan ISK underscore. Yeah, Let's that's go. That's easier to remember. Another like, Stan had Stan ISK. Stanisk. Oh, there's other Stanisks in the world. Wow. Stanisk. Shout out. There you go. Well, that's a new one. Find us at Sharehouse Pod, sharehousepod at gmail.com if you want to chat to us. That's it. Hey, make sure to tell someone you love them today. Bye. Bye. Bye.